Blake, and we are going to have Alistair band away first and Rise immediately to follow. So again, we talked about, you know, what do you change from game to game? Because obviously Masters 3 at this point, they can smell the nine points. Oh, they yeah. need to pick up two O's here. The difference between a two O or a draw is three points to one. They have a shot at first in LPL this week, and it needs to start with King. Yeah, it's massive, but it seems like the bans have been swapped over just a little bit. Of course, M3 were forced to ban the Rise and the Callista last time around. King now on that duty. Echo going to be banned away from M3. They don't want to first pick that for Condi at all, but wouldn't be surprised we didn't see that Gragas locked away as quickly as possible on the M3 side, but they still have that last ban to think about. SMLZ probably more than happy to grab that Corky one more time. I think about it. He had a great performance. And again, I think yeah. one of the, the primary problems of King, there we go. So targeting out Looper's Rumble, like making sure that the nice equalizers aren't able to go down, was uh, eating up a ban on the Caitlyn. Well, Caitlyn has snuck through now. We'll see where the King decide to pick that one away, where the M3 are going to put a whole lot of priority on that. I'd be very surprised if Caitlyn was first picked, though. A lot of large caliber picks still left on the board. And Gragas, of course, worked fantastically for Gondi in the first game. What ain't broke? Don't fix it. I agree 100% with this. That said, I think King need to first rotation Victor here. Oh, yeah. Well, what the Vladimir is still available. Insect could grab the Vlad, and they could grab a Victor as well if they wanted to. But in, mm. uh, sorry, Siva is going to be locked in by Insect, so still a whole lot of priority on that champion. It is going to be Nautilus locked away here for Huey. Well, S from Huey. Probably going to go to Siva zero. Nautilus is a fairly common um, second rotation or rotation together. Yeah. Almost as similar or as common as Hecarim and Siva. Obviously, these two champions synergize off of each other a lot. Um, Nautilus is, has CC riddled throughout his entire kit. His auto attack, his dredge line, his riptide, the depth charge. The depth charge synergizes really well with the Siva on the hunt because it's just a long range initiation tool. So. Press your R button and then <clears> go. Basically. Press R win game. Did not happen for King last game, but there's that Corky. Yeah, Corky going to be picked up once again. Love City more than happy to hop back on the Annie. And so far, M3 have not changed anything in their comp. And King hasn't done anything to make them. So now they're going to be hovering over a few choices. Wouldn't be surprised if Master Yi was locked in. Of course, very high priority pick at the moment. Ooh. Says Max as sarcastically as possible here. Is Varus now a consideration for Korn? Huey, no surprises, going to lock in the Rek'Sai, the other champion he can play. It's um, if this Varus does commit... It's kind of warring them all. Okay. Thank goodness. I was going to say, it's going to be like almost a counter or a, I dare you. He's, he's effectively drawing the line in the sand <laughs> with Varus. And he's like, okay, pick the mid-range uh, mage champions like Azir, like Cassiopeia, like Victor. I dare you. But doesn't commit. Picks up the Victor for himself. Yeah, but Azir is an opportunity here for Dade if he wants to pick that one up. The thing that I really like about the Azir-Victor matchup is we talk about how Victor is one of the few control mages or mid-range mages that have tons of kill pressure over walls. Now, obviously, Azir, he can, you know, go over walls and bounce back and try to throw his wall. The Emperor's Divide goes up on Victor. That doesn't stop any of his damage. He's still going to drop his Chaos Storm right yeah. on the other side of it and blow you up. Well, you just do all of your buttons on Victor, don't you? So often, the, the Emperor's Divide just doesn't have the time to come in. Everything's already down on the ground. Yep. So... Corn doesn't really need to worry about that too much, but Insect is going to lock away the Yasuo in response to what was the Nah Azir combo. Has found a whole lot of success in the LPL and around the world, but Yasuo for Insect. You saw him head in hands before, now back to that comfort pick in the top lane, which is not necessarily something we really associate a Yasuo with, but Insect, he's made it work somehow. I mean, unfortunately, the problem with Insect's champion pool right now is he hasn't adapted to the meta, obviously transitioning from the jungle position into the top side. He hasn't been able to be that role-playing tank. He played right. some of the Hecarim and never really took off for him. Um, he showed Maokai, I think, twice to unfortunate results, and he likes the Yasuo. He spams it a ton in solo queue, but what it means for his team in terms of a, a team fight or success is very limited. There might be a morale pick here for Insect. He just has fun playing Yasuo, so he wants to I would feel imagine. good on the Rift. It seemed a little bit like that considering his start to this game. But Zero is going to be taking the Nautilus against the Annie. And as far as this bottom lane goes in comparison to the Karma in there instead of the Nautilus, I mean, is it going to be improving Name's chances here? Are they going to be opting for a lane swap potentially? What's sort of the go here with the bottom side of the map? Um, you can always lane swap anyway just because unlocking Nautilus gives tons of roam yeah. potential and Zero is going to have more control of the creep wave. But I think it's an empowered 2v2. I think they want the 2v2 and they're looking for a kill lane. Well, we'll see whether they get it as we hop onto the roof.
See you later, music. And Masters 3 versus King. We're onto the rift now, ladies and gentlemen, as Condi body slamming his way up the lane. And King with a five-man stack towards the top side. Pinging that one out, they want to make sure that they get there, and they might be able to catch Looper, who decides to stop. Not going to enter any further up that river. So the reason why you see teams do this, where they walk either down the bottom lane or the top lane, is because they're playing with Fog of War, and they're attempting to... Uh, to invade around vision and avoid the normal ward positions. Typically, it's from the bottom side, but King and I believe OMG, Vici sometimes as well do it from the top side. Yeah, sorry, I was sitting back enjoying the sweet music that Insect was playing there on the top lane. Does he play it on an actual harmonica or does he play it on like a flute? I think it's, a, well, it sounds like a harmonica. It'd be difficult to make those I think on that skin, it, yeah, I think it's a yeah. harmonica. You'd hope so, sort of leaning back on that sweet gun sword that he's got. <laughs> I'm not a big Yasuo player. No, neither am I. Well, I'd like to be. It's a lot of fun. He's never really been able to make it work. But Insect most definitely has, especially from the top lane. He's only 2-4. Yeah, see? On oh, Yasuo, yeah, so <laughs> it's but a 33% win rate. You know where King is? They're last. So 2-4, not that bad. 30%, he'll when take that. When you compare that. that to the rest of the stats, exactly. this is looking pretty good. Exactly. you got to draw positives from wherever you can. If you're a King fan. Colin, though, has made his way to this mid lane a little bit sooner. And Dade, he's going to find his way in. He's going to set up some Sand Soldiers as Insect and Condi are going to clear out as much of this jungle as they can. He's animation cancelling so quickly that you just can't see him move. He just went full Goku. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that may have been a little bit of a visual issue. But Love City hanging out here on the bottom side of the map is Zero going to be... Taking a little bit of harassment from Love CD, but once again, we'll see whether SMLZ can have the same performance on this Corky this time around. Mm. And again, we talked about how Corky really finds strength in this lane post level 6 because of how he uses his rockets on Sivir's spell shield to make her eat some free damage. But early levels 1 through 5, Nami should just be able to eat the Phosphorus Bomb. Well, it's a 1 versus level 2 here on the bottom side. Dredge line lands on SMLZ as well as Love CD was forced to flash very early on. They're actually taking a little bit of return damage, and there's the level 2 finally for M3. They were very keen to fight there with a level disadvantage. It is 9 creeps to level 2, so the full wave and then 3 more creep waves. Always have to watch out for the surprise level 2, especially in a Nautilus lane. Yeah, it's not likely a surprise here as well as the wall comes through. That was pretty cheeky. On. Yeah, that was very cheeky. Insect did manage to get the knockoff though, so trade 1 there. He's using this Steel Tempest very well in this lane. Nar, uh, I mean, how Nar is really going to take control over the Yasuo versus Nar matchup is really in mini Nar form because obviously you're abusing having that range um, as opposed to the mega Nar slow form. So we'll see if uh, Insect can continually keep this wave in to keep advantage and try to trade uh, blows here in the top side with his flow. But otherwise, I think we'll slowly start to see this one eke out into Looper's favor, especially as he starts itemizing. I'm curious if he's going to go for resistances or if he's going to look for more the... Uh, Black Cleaver Frozen Mallet approach. Well, Tremor Sense from Huey's going to spot Condi out moving to around this bottom side of the map. King going to get some vision down as well. As Gragas makes his way into the Krugs. Dade with some Sand Soldiers in the mid lane, just going to clear things out. Huey this time pretty happy to have a couple of buffs as opposed to just the one. Didn't get three buff this time? No. Got three buffed, had the level advantage, missed the smite. Yep. He has a chance to redeem himself. See whether he can here. Of course, we would have put Condi and Huey on similar levels. This was a different time, but at the moment, Condi looking a little bit more in form than the old Huey. Yeah, Condi's just more versatile at this point because he has a larger champion pool that's you know been effective. And unfortunately for Huey as well. <laughs> yeah, it's hard though on King. A lot of their stats got burned down because of their crazy positioning at last place in the league. Yeah. Very difficult. Nami. To get stunned up there a little bit, Huey was looking for a way to get in here. His SMLZ is actually going to be forced to go back. So the Corky picks himself up the makings of the Phage. Nami with a victory in this lane and to clear out another minion wave and put himself ahead. SMLZ again going for the more defensive start to his Corky as opposed to rushing down that sheen. It's actually taking 
a bit of an advantage here on the top side as well. 33 to 26, landing all of these tornadoes as well as Luca's actually struggling a little bit in this lane as it moves forward. He's got a lot more um, ability to keep control of the creep wave and keep it pushed forward just because of the safety in his flow. As soon as Looper gets more points into his boomerang, he's able to spam that out. He'll slowly start to get control back over this wave. But Insect's doing a good job um, pushing forward so that Looper has to donate his auto attacks to CSing versus poking him. Insect does need to be careful. He's on the wrong side of these creeps. He's gets the tornado, he's just decides have to, to take really a flash. Nope. Oh, there he goes. Flashes out of the way of the boomerang, though, so he's going to continue with maximum movement speed. On the other side, Zero did manage to land a dredge line here as Insect continues his wander. He is behind enemy lines. A wanderer is never lost, Froskerin, but there's the body slam. Insect's going to get slowed down as well. Does use the E, but Dade with the fantastic. Stun up there as well, so he's going to be able to grab that shield, pick himself up a kill as Looper. He's going down very low, but Megan are at exactly the right time now. King have to deal with the Sand Soldier damage. The knockup comes through though, and Huey locks himself down the King. The kill onto Dade. Sean here as well, it's a double kill for Huey. He's picking them up in the early game. We have to give him that as Love City. Takes a bunch of hurt, and Korn, after the flash, is going to pick up that kill to round this one out. So all said and done, King are able to mobilize quickly enough that they're able to at least trade for Insect. Uh, obviously, he ends up still going down, but they take advantage there with the two to three kills. Yep, that's my handoff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wonderful work there. King now with a 500 gold advantage. Are going to be able to get a bit of pressure into this mid lane as well. It is 42 to 45 in favor of Korn at the moment, but started with first blood last game, so not quite as happy as he once was. Insect just gonna be dancing through these Eey. minions. Does close the gap there as Windwall comes down. There's the last breath. He's gonna be able to lock down the solo kill as he makes his way back to lane. Beautiful recognition from Insect right there to realize, hey, I just backed, I burned my TP, or excuse me, I didn't burn my TP, but I have the zeal, so the buy advantage over Looper with just his Doran shield immediately goes for the kill. Yeah, just did all of his buttons there as well. Just able to close the gap, of course. The fact Is that, that how you just win the game? All of your buttons? Do all of your buttons. Yeah, that's how you win League of Legends. Uh, at least not, as far as my understanding is concerned. There's as many buttons. Oh, wow. Did. And he forces the TP. So not only does he get the kill because he's able to respawn uh, with enough time and, and catch Looper off guard by just rushing him down, but he then forces the wave underneath the tower to force the TP discrepancy. We'll see if King are able to translate this into Dragon Control. Because obviously, if Looper can't teleport to the bottom side of the map, that means King have a numbers advantage there. Well, Dredgeline going to land here on the bottom side. Nami going to land a nice boomerang as well into Love City, down to about 2,500 health. Z takes a bit of damage there, but trades back nicely against Name. Cute, tiny little Valkyrie. Gets him out of the way of the next boomerang. I think Name actually messed up his auto attack right there. <laughs> I was watching, I was like, did he try to reset that and just canceled it? Cheeky cancel. Unfortunate. I was actually going to talk to you about how this top lane works, because we haven't seen a whole lot of carry top laners. Insect on this yes, well, he definitely is, but Huey's going to stop me here as Dade Emperor's Divide gets the Rek'Sai out of his business. Dade has been looking so good on Azir. First that uh, catch on Insect out of his flow with the cheeky knockup, oh, yeah. and now with a beautiful Emperor's Divide. Really working it out here. Did fall down in that first trade, but picked himself up a couple of assists. Almost has that Marilla Namaton sitting on 20% extra cooldown reduction from Forbidden Idol and, of course, the Fiendish Codex. So he's sitting pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Moment. Pretty pretty. They call him the Golden Chicken. <laughs> Dade or Azir? Azir. Dade. Yeah, actually, do that would be funny if they called Dade the Golden Chicken as well. I'd have absolutely no idea why, but it'd be amusing. SMLZ sitting here at half health, but the safety of this turret, not so much safety anymore as it's very, very low. And Nami, a lot of pressure down here on the bottom side. King again committing to their strategy of tower taking. They take the first early one and going on the aggressive. Yeah, on the hunt comes down. There's the depth charge. It's chasing SMLZ. Is that able to create enough distance over Love City? May not be as lucky. I believe that auto attack did go off there from Nami. They locked down the kill. It was, in fact, the Ignite from Zero that picked that one up, and Huey just going to tank up this bottom out of turret, and King will take their first of the game. So, at the moment, 2,100 gold in the lead for King. This happened last time. See whether King can turn it around once more, whether 
I mean, whether M3 can turn around once more or whether this time it's going to be King able to take it. This should at least mean the initial dragon for King this time around. Hopefully they can get on the board in this set. Just because, again, they have so much control. There's the Void Rush from Huey to put himself back into position. Insect can teleport back there, but I like the response from M3. We can't contest the dragon. We just lost to the bot lane. Rush to topside. Gank Insect. Condi is going to get spotted by a ward. King going to be starting off this dragon, as you said. Dade hanging out in the mid lane, just wants to get as much pressure down there as he possibly can. But with two people on the top side of the map, means the King are going to be safe up there, as well as able to take down this dragon. And even Korn able to get up to this mid lane minion wave. That was a great rotation from Zero to move him up into the top side to secure Insect. So a really nice adaptation of Forethought from King, yeah. okay? You know, they can't play on the Dragon. They know that where they're going to go, they're going to look topside. We've got to shore up all of our bases. Yeah, and also where is SMLZ going to go now as he's forced to use that Valkyrie to try and escape flashes. Good flash. Yeah, he's going to get out of the way of the Boomerang, and he's going to be safe for now. There's a dredge line onto Looper as he jumps out of the way of the Tornado. So Insect not going to lock down that kill for now, but he's in definite control of this lane. I guess we're getting a replay. So, uh, I mean, all this really comes down to is the flashing at the tower. Of course, he just hits the final auto attack knowing that the enemy is ignited. But it was all about just the power of Sivir and just how threatening her reach is with yeah. that ultimate on a, on a flat lane like that. Yeah, that's the fact that the Nautilus and Sivir combo is fantastic. Nami's going to get caught, though. There's the Tibbers. So much damage. The Ignite's taken down. We'll see whether it's going to be enough as SMLZ. He's taken down to about 100 health. Insect teleports in, picks up that kill now, dancing around this minion wave. Oh, misses the Steel Tempest for now, but Korn's going to grab himself a Love CD. Insect picks up the kill credit for that one because he's pretty hungry for some more kills. It's a 2-1 and 2 Yasuo this time around, and King making use of their comfort pick in the top lane. Insect plays a ton of Yasuo on his solo queue, so it may look bizarre, but he is a... We're going to call him a, a Yasuo veteran for that top lane. <laughs> Can you call him veteran? I thought veteran was more of a time-based thing. He's 2-4. Now it'll be what? It's either going to be 2-5 or 3-4, I believe. Yeah, well, look. I'm happy to call him a veteran. Throw that one out there. He's played the most top Yasuo that I've seen so far. Admittedly, I haven't seen a lot of it. As it is still quite an advantage here for King. Moving through this game. Is Dada just going to clear out this minion wave in the mid? Big thing, of course, is going to be the itemization as we check back in. So SMLZ, the obvious one for Corky is, oh, the Trinity Force. Once mm -hmm. he gets his Trinity Force, he gets a power spike. That was my best Corky impression. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Um, he's only got a Sheen, so he does have some nice dueling potential right there, but he's going to be safely farming, kind of tucked away until he gets that big item. Um, other things to point out is that Name has completed his pickaxe, his BF sword, and his avarice blade, which is why you start seeing him being moved around the map. It's not about completing the infinity edge. They don't need it because they took the dragon, so they know that there won't be a 5v5, so there's no reason to invest that gold into completing that item for that power spike. It's all about just pushing down those towers. So taking the Avarice Blade as opposed to completing the infinity edge is fine because it's going to give him more gold because he knows he's going to be shoved out into one of these lanes to just push down structures. Yeah, and the, what he really wants is raw AD and potentially attack speed as exactly. well. Exactly. Anything that gives you damage towards a turret and you can't crit a turret. Exactly. <laughs> You can't crit a turret. You can't. If only you could. No, that'd be pretty difficult if you were a turret. The life of a turret would become very short at that stage. Huey is going to be able to take down the Krugs on the top side of the map. King now pretty keen to defend this outer turret in the top lane as there are three members strong of M3 making their way here. Love City doesn't have the flash quite yet. He's going to be up very, very soon. But Name with a ton of wave clear. He's able to lock down that minion wave and uses a nice little spell shield to get rid of the rocket. But Insect... Continuing the push on the bottom side of the map, gets a nice little tornado onto Looper, but a Looper with the Randuin's Omen now shrugging off the majority of the damage. Insect, he's looking for a Infinity Edge second item, so foregoing any of the lifesteal choices, any survivability, he, he just wants, wants damage. Yeah, he wants to duel, and obviously the, that crit cloak and the completed static shift will do wonders on his passive, oh, which yeah. doubles his crit. He'd be very close to that as well as... Korn does have his first upgrade of that hex score as well. Going towards that Merlinomicon, not quite there just yet, but, but very even in the mid lane. King's plan, we said it before, you know, they tried it last game with the Twisted Fate with the server, it's to split push, to yep. apply multiple lanes of pressure. This time around, they're not giving it to Korn, they're giving it to Insect. And with his dueling style build, as well as the static shift to push creep waves as quickly as possible, they're executing it much better this time around. Seconds. He's able to use that wind wall to great effect as well on this Yasuo. He's able to stop a lot of the 
harassment to come through from Looper. Looper's sort of relegated to just farming out that wave in response to insects pressure that he's putting on. I mean, Still keeping up in farm, it's fine. Yeah, and King really just snowballed their advantage and got the itemization ahead on Insect that Meganar, or excuse me, Mininar never got the, the chance to get as many points into his queue yeah. for the CDR, so he could start really punishing the fact that Yasuo is a melee-based champion versus a range champion. So just a, a great job from King and Insect really understanding you know, when he is stronger and how to take full advantage of that. Drift Dade. King is here. Yeah, Dade is going to get himself out of here. Condi makes his way over. Huey just going to get deposited over the wall. Gravity Field not going to find anyone there as Korn tried to get something done. But Dade, once again, with a beautiful disengage. Oh, the body slam aggressively from Condi as he's trying to get some aggression in there. The W proc doing a bunch of work here under Huey, but he does get the knock up. There's the death ray as well. Insects making his way around, wants to pick himself up the kill. Body slam up once again from Condi. That is going to mean everything's going to be okay as Sand Soldiers just parading around the area, making sure the King can't get any further work done. Really just a miscommunication from Dade and Kanji right there. There was no reason to look for a re-engagement, especially because you didn't have numbers advantage on that side of the map. But more importantly, the Emperor's Divide had already been used as a disengage tool, whereas the Chaos Storm was still available. So not quite on the same page. That said, they're not punished too badly for it. Dade now, he's picked himself up that needlessly large rod at the same time. So with them Relanomicon, needlessly large rod, a whole lot of extra wave, wave clear with the flat AP that is going to be coming through onto those minions. So Sand Soldier is doing a fair bit of work there with their auto attacks and able to clear up these minions very, very quickly. Not to mention that cooldown reduction, giving you some attack speed on there, but also being able to move those soldiers around a whole lot more. This time around, though, we were asking, you know, when are Masters 3 going to step up and attempt to 5v5 King? And it's now. We talked about, again, everyone knows, the Trinity Force, it's complete. This is Power when Corky's spike. strong. Power Spike! But likewise, Dade has that CDR, like you said, pointing yeah. out the Morello's complete, but more importantly, then just the flat AP of the needlessly large rod. So Masters 3 are ready, except they're getting flanked. Yeah, King actually looking for the engagement here, but the Insect's gonna get caught up by the Tibbers. Nice wind wall, gonna stop a lot of SMLZ's damage at zero with the aggression. Oh, Looper. Looper about to get into Meganar form. Is he gonna be able to get the Nar into the wall here as Dade Empress divide back in? Huey's gonna get stunned up, but it's only one person to get hit by it. It's a two for two thus far in this fight, but Insect, he's starting to go off running rampant in this one. Chaos Storm was chasing SMLZ. They do lock down Condi, who was trying to give his life for the fight, but King, they may just catch up. There's the flash into the E. Double kill for Insect as Love City gets the Moby Boots back up and running, but King, they win a decisive team fight, four for two. Four for two, and now the Dragon. We'll see if they can commit it into something more. Don't think they had the creep waves for it, but Korn, oh, he's just trying to reset the wave. I see what he's doing. He's just bouncing it. Wow killing some things, <laughs> making sure it takes stuff down, but Insect's got a whole lot of damage. Let's have a look at this one again. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be a good flank from uh, King. They eventually do get it. Master 3, Love CD stalls them out a bit on the uh, the Tibbers right there. But the big thing is that Dade overcommits so hard looking for the Azir sec, especially because Condi just reset majority of the fight, and he's not able to get it off in time. Uh, and then from there, King just really cleaned this up, especially with Korn flashing forward, getting his Chaos Storm down. Especially on the chase, the one thing that I really wanted to point out is Korn used his Q on the creep wave to give him the evolution point, to give him yeah, back movement speed. More movement speed. Right here, so there's the Q, it gives him the movement speed, he's able to tag SMLZ with the laser, and then that's what gives Insect the go-ahead to flash forward and finish that off. Yeah, and that's a 4-1-4 four, four Yasuo here as well. So 8 out of 11 kill participations at the same time. Close to a 4,000 gold lead for King. It's SMLZ trying to farm himself back up to relevance. Of course, the power spike of the Trinity Force is going to help him. Power still spike. irrespective. But Nami feeling a whole lot better this time around. Does have the Berserker's Greaves as well as the Infinity Edge and that Avarice Blade. So Avarice Blade actually gives a whole lot of extra relevant stats now that that Infinity Edge is completed. But if you want to talk about the evolution of King and when they find success, which you just pointed out that they are finding a ton of success yeah. this time around, it's when Name's not caring. Not that he can't. We've seen him early on, especially when King had a very disjointed roster, you know, picking up Jinx and just trying to strap everyone onto his back. But it's when he picks up a more utility role and he empowers Korn, and this time around, Insect, to really do the caring for him. Well, Insect now trying to dance around his wing while SMLZ taking a bunch of damage, but Insect just dancing oh. through this creep wave, heads back in, but 
Just looked like he was mucking around at the end of that one. Knows that in a 2v2, 2v1 situation wasn't going to be as great, but it was very cute. That was so close to being amazing. He had the <laughs> knock-up on SMLZ. He had the less bre last breath available. If Love CD hadn't hit him at the very end with the CC, that could have very well been a one-for-one -one trade. It was close. It was close. King, though, trying to steal away this blue buff. Do get a knock up on it, and it is going to be taken away by Huey. I just love how calm you are sitting next to me, and I'm watching it like, oh my god, he's going to get it. Oh my god, he's going to get it. <laughs> and Atlas is like, and there he goes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have the faith. I'm sorry. That being said, he's lasted a lot longer than I was expecting. To be Using his flow to dodge the Corky rockets? Oh, come on, that was style points. <laughs> Unfortunately, unable to dodge the auto attack. Although he did make a pretty good case for it at the very beginning. He put himself right in melee range of yeah. Annie. I'm curious which spell she got him with, but I feel like he like stood next to her high five and she just punched him in the face and he died. <laughs> Accidentally hit her when she had her molten shield up. Uh, always satisfying. Does have that BF sword now completed, so Insect very close to picking up that Infinity Edge. Only close to 1,500 gold, something like that, in order to grab that one. King, this way. complete reversal as far yeah. as their dragon control is concerned, which again, we keep talking about, you know, they have the lead this time around, which, I mean, that's like they had the lead last game, and that didn't go very well, but... No, it wasn't quite this high, though. Just under a 5,000 gold lead for King at the moment. Doing much better with their split push and split pressure threats on this Yasuo and the Sivir. And before Masters 3 were able to stall it out because they had the win condition of the fifth dragon and the superior 5v5 in their AoE stack, this time around have lost at least the beginning of that win condition and a lot of their wave clear as well as uh, Dade is not in position on this tower. Yeah, and 3 have also had absolutely no turret pressure whatsoever. The outer ring is about to go down here for King. You can see the fact that that mid lane outer turret very, very low here on the side of M3. Losing structures of this side, not able to command as much map control as they had last time. Of course, defensive vision, they do have a whole lot towards the top side of the map, but that is about all M3 can hang their hat on at the moment. Yeah, they really... They had an opportunity with that last dragon fight where it was fairly even in terms of gold and itemization across all the teams, but now King are starting to snowball very far ahead. We're looking at a 5k gold discrepancy, and so now Masters 3, they can't really afford any more mistakes. Well, we'll see whether they can pick themselves back up. Of course, this team often flounders towards the early stages of a game, just want to be able to get to those late, later team fights, make sure that Dade can sort of not go super deep this time? Not go super deep this time, but also sort of flourish in his natural habitat that does seem to be these team fights where he can make magic happen. Of course, didn't in the early stage of this game, but does have more opportunities as this game progresses. And they have plenty of tools to come back. Azir is going to be a fantastic addition into that late game. Uh, Nar, the Azir wall, the combo there is fairly obvious. Um, SMLZ had a great performance on Corky. He's not too far behind this game. Looking at his Blade of the Ring King. Curious if he's going to go for the uh, Berserker Greaves this time around. Doubt it. Just because there's no Abyssal, I think he'll have to be, or at least have to commit to Sorcerer Shoes. Yeah, and of course they do have Looper for a little bit more physical damage there as well. Although I guess it's still more of a two-threat comp here with Dade and SMLZ. So we'll see what he does decide to do. I'd be pretty interested as well. But I do like the Berserker's Greaves most definitely. It's also much easier to itemize against King's uh, composition this time around because they have more uh, damage threats as opposed to magic damage threats. Yeah, and if we're going to talk about items here, Insect, he now does have that Infinity Edge completed, both him and Name picking up both the Static Shiv and that item, so very, very powerful. I mean, if you're talking about a, a Yasuo Power Spike, 100% crit, as well as the fact that he has the extra tenacity from these Mercury threats, all he needs now is a little bit more of that lifesteal, and he's going to be sitting very pretty on this Yasuo, but already dishing out so much damage. And I'm proving that he's got the moves to do it, you know, looking for that cheeky yeah. outplay on the bottom side. So curious how he's going to approach this next big team fight as Dragon is up and available. Big ultimates to watch. I mean, it sounds obvious, but obviously the tippers. Um, the wombo combo threat is there from Masters 3, and you can never discount a, a wombo combo. Yeah, you got to have a look at Looper as well. He's got a full rage bar heading into this one. They do lose the dragon, but Tibbers comes in. Loves it. He's immediately going to die. Looper able to get the transform very quickly. He already down to half health, though. Misses the ultimate there as Insect gets out of the way of the stun. Empress Divide on Aname gets him out of the pit, but Insect over the wall after Dade locks himself down the kill. And King still chasing after these M3 members. Condi now has to deal with Insect. 
after he flashes away from the SO, so he's going to be okay for now, but that was a disastrous fight for M3. Yeah, unfortunately for Masters 3, the King uh, on the hunt ultimate was used defensively to kind of reset their positioning, and it was really just a, a scrappy brawl fest in every single direction, and more importantly, the Gnar ultimate. We talked about, you know, you can never discount a wombo combo, but you kind of need to hit it. Yeah, yeah. With that, it'll be the Dragon for King, as well as possibly two towers. Here we go, here's a replay. Um, so right here again, you have Chain CC, or the potential for Chain CC, but you didn't chain it up onto anything. You dropped the Tibbers. Uh, that was only on the first Huey as well. Exactly. Looper trying to get his Gnar form, but the big thing is he just doesn't connect anywhere with that Gnar ultimate. Again, so much damage is still going on. Huey, one of the tankiest members. Insect has a really nice cheeky outplay here where he gets behind the Emperor's Dubai, Dade trying to split the fight by using the pit in the terrain, and then he follows Dade over the wall and he tries to get back to safety. So great performance from Insect so far. Yeah, M3, that fight is locking themselves in the Dragon Pit in order to die, basically, as Korn was able to get so much AoE damage off there as well. But M3 now need to sort of get themselves back together. But 9,000 gold is what this lead has stretched to. Three Dragons to nothing in favor of King as well. They are in well and truly control of this game. Lich Bane now completed from Korn as well. So mixing up this item build, decides he doesn't want to go for the Abyssal Scepter that Dade up for last time around. This has a lot more split pushing damage. It just seems to like that playstyle. It's all about the split push for King across the board. There's no need for the Abyssal Scepter because, again, you don't need the aura on the magic damage because a lot of your team is physical damage this yeah. time around. But wow. King, the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers, indeed. This is something that we we're actually having a conversation about earlier here is the fact that taking splits, making splits happen to a lot of these top tier teams really keeps the points lower. That's just a massive discrepancy. If you've got a team that's managing to go two and zero all the time, or even if they're just going two and zero or zero and two, they're going to get so far ahead. It's all about these straight victories for these uh, higher teams. And M3, if they want to make a play for it, they're going to have to do it now. Triple stun with the Nar from Looper there as Gravity Field went down, but Name is going to deal with that guy very quickly. Love City going to get Chaos Storm to Nessim LZ just on his own, flashes underneath the turret. Dade now finding his way in here, but Korn's running so fast. There's the auto attack from the Q, as well as the Lich Bane proc. That would have done way too much damage in the hands of this Victor. They take down the inner turret, and that Baron Bait was exactly what they needed. And it was high risk, low, or excuse me, low risk, high reward for King right there. They knew, okay, we either take the Baron for free, they're forced to face check us, and we're just so far ahead that it'll mean the base, and we can just pick up the Baron afterwards. So King, they understand exactly how far ahead they are, and there's just not much Master 3 can do at this point. No, 12,000 gold now the lead for King, heading back towards the Baron, maybe back to base as Insect wants to pick up some more items, now looking for what could be the Banshee's Veil, just wanting to get rid of a little bit of CC that does come through. He's going to be able to finish that item up now. We'll see what he goes for next there. does have a cheeky Doran's Blade sitting in his back pocket, but wouldn't be surprised if there was some form of lifesteal coming in at some point. This is pretty much going to be the Baron. Master 3 right now, they're rushing because they know King is back to try to move up into this Baron pit area, clear out as much pink vision denial as they can and place down their own ward so they can possibly look for a steal or a pick. That's the only lifeline and option they have left. Well, you are going to get slowed down by the autos from the Sand Soldiers. Of course, they you doing a bit of that work there as well trying to zone away this Azir. Top lane is going to have to be dealt with here. Loop is able to get up there and do that, but still vision available for M3 around this Baron. They know that that's not going to be going down as Azir doing some farming here in lane with the Sun Turret. Now Dade is going to be able to clear this one up, but is there a point where M3 just naturally gets this game back, or is the scaling from King enough? Uh, it's all on Dade's Azir, and frankly, his the theory that he's been trying to implement with his Azir play has actually been relatively sound. Um, Unfortunately, King of just so far ahead, and there was a little bit of outplay potential in the last dragon between Insect and Dada, but otherwise he's played the champion fairly well. Uh, six items there is going to be absolutely terrifying, but I mean, on the other side you have Victor. The way that Victor's kit works against Azir, we talk about how much threat he has over walls and how the Emperor's Divide doesn't mean anything of slowing down Victor's damage output, so... Yeah. And that was a free Baron for King there as well. We saw that one just go down. M3 knew what was happening, but understood that without any Rage Bar on their Nah, without Looper being anywhere near that fight, there was nothing they could do. His teleport has only just come back off cooldown. Insect teleported in to take that Baron, and you can see now King so much vision around the map. Now massive Super Creeps heading into the base as well. 
as these barren up minions that King have now buffed up to head in here. And Insect protecting that souped up cannon minion with his wind wall. He's still hanging out, getting the siege damage down. But King don't have a lot of range to siege these turrets. Uh, yeah, and again, you still have great wave clear on pretty much either side. Uh, so the split push pressure is where King really thrive, which is why they're kind of balancing these different power points, excuse me, yeah. pressure points between the top side of the map and the uh, middle of the map. So they're just being very patient and knowing that they can just bleed M3 out at this point. And M3 are just waiting for them to make it. Oh, safe. Connie, he's going to catch up Name there, but he's going to be able to get out of there just in time as the Chaos Storm comes down. Victor locks down the first kill. SMLZ's dead. Dade uses the Zonyas, but there's three members of King just waiting for him to come back up. Nice stun available from Love CD, but Dade, he's going to fall down. He desperately wants to find another one. Condi surviving for quite some time here. Looper trying to clean up an insect back in it once more. And he's like another AD carry. The Nah back in amongst everything. Misses the wallop though, does Looper. He's tanky, but he's not tanky enough as King just pulverized that team fight. It looked good for Masters 3 for a second, but really this is just the gold disparity between these two teams that Insect's able to clean that up at the very end. Looper doing what he can, but this Yasuo is just so far ahead. They are going to be able to take down the mid out of uh, inhibitor turret, sorry, as inhibitor is going to follow there as well. The bounce over the top, Looper looking for something, does manage to land the boomerang. SMLZ, he's respawned, coming back to try and take down Insect. Another boomerang is there, uses the wind wall, does Insect, gets over there with the E. Last breath comes down, oh my goodness, almost gets it turned, but SMLZ... And enough damage, and Looper secures the kill. Looking for an outplay as opposed to just looking for the out. <laughs> I liked it. That's how you play this one. Another BF Sword completed for Insect as well. He doesn't want Lifesteal. He's got a Vampire Acceptor, I guess, but BF Sword was the first choice. Going towards that Bloodthirster. Man, I love how he plays Yasuo. I guess moral of the story is don't make Insect cry. Yeah. We talked about earlier um, the draws versus the, the victories and the losses and what it really means. It, it's difficult coming from NA or in EU and trying to look at the league format in LPL and kind of get a good grasp of understanding because all the time people will just like, oh, all these teams are, are splitting. And yeah, there's very fierce competition. This is one of the closest splits that LPL has ever had yeah. just due to the saturation of talent on every single roster. But I love the point system because it empowers teams like King who are in last place to heavily impact the top of the standings, like they're doing with Masters 3. Masters 3, they face WE, Unlimited Potential, and King, the bottom three teams this week. That is a total of nine points up for grabs. EDG, Shadow, they play one match each. If Masters 3 are able to commit on these two O's, they can easily see themselves at the top of the standings in first place for LPL, but the gatekeepers shutting them down. Yeah, and if they go 1-1 one, one every time, it's the same as having 1-2-0 victory. Exactly. And so they're not even going to be able to keep up with EDG if they manage to beat Snake later in the weekend. So It heavily rewards consistency, but exactly. it doesn't punish experimentation. So the top tier teams can continue to sit on the top and kind of expand their champion pools, do rotating rosters, play compositions that they're not normally used to. But again, if you're, if you're the most dominating team, you can quickly snowball ahead. We definitely know this. They're trying to hold on to this game with everything that they've got. King now as well, trying to push in on the newly respawned inhibitor in the top side of the map. Love City going to dodge away from the tornado. See whether King can get in here and make a decisive play. But at the moment, they are being kept at bay here momentarily by M3. They're being very respectful. So they actually made a, a fatal error when they tried to dive the initial mid-tier tower. And again, the only yeah. reason that that worked out for them is because they're 12k gold ahead. Insect was so fed. If that was a, even just a slightly closer fight or a slightly closer discrepancy, they would have lost a ton of momentum there. Well, at this point, still 1,200 gold in the lead. M3 have managed to keep it at that point for about five minutes. So no extra advantage is eked out so far for King, but they're just waiting for that fifth dragon. It is going to be up in a few minutes as they are pressuring this top side of the map. The inhibitor down to about two-thirds health. But Dade clearing out these mini waves very effectively. Sun Turret is going to go down, though, so it's going to stop defending against all of those super creeps pushing forward. And King now looking to try and reset this one and grab some more objectives around the map if they can find them. It's that fifth dragon win condition. There's yeah. no reason to try to uh, gamble away their lead. They want to make it clean, clinical, very straightforward closeout. So I like the yeah. fact that they're being so respectful to Masters 3 Wombo Combo and deciding to go for the fifth dragon and take those uh, double stats 
into this last team fight. Not to mention all of that extra burn damage as well from the auto attack. So Condi has cleared out this top wave that I believe will reset here for M3. As King now looking to get some position around the area. One minute until the Baron's up. Of course, a little bit more priority for King on that dragon. The fifth dragon buff, so important, especially when the opposing side has zero, because that's a 12% statistical swing. Pretty ridiculous. It just gives you so many more options as far as, yeah. you know, playmaking ability. If you think about the fifth dragon as, like, the option play for King, because they can either just take the fifth dragon, get that crazy buff, but for sure, Masters 3 have to come out of their base, or they need to to contest this so then okay do king just stall them and they do a baron dance and meanwhile they send you know either sivir or yasuo to clean out the base it just it opens up so many different options of winning the game as opposed to just a very linear run into their base 5v5 team fight now m3 five men strong heading up this mid lane and see king now with a lot of varied vision around this map five pink wards down i believe they got a tower yeah. nice work there we are no perfect structural game for King available this time around, as the second turret actually does go down, I tell a lie. Already lost one. But, pulling it back, 11,000 gold now. So M3, trying to get themselves back into this game. Still firmly in the hands of King, but never give up, is the M3 motto. And they're used to playing from behind. That's the Royal's motto. Spawn. Well, I guess they are Royal, never give up, so it, it does. When you said it, I was like, RNG's not in this game. <laughs> Well, former Royal is almost in this game. This is true. Very, very perplexing. Star Club Gamty Club. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Star Royal Gamty Club? Yeah, there we go. Oh, Insect Teleport. Yeah, there's the knock-up under SMLZ. Does use a Valkyrie to get out of there. Is Name beautiful spell shield onto Love CDs. So he's oh. going to get popped. Huey goes down very low as well. SMLZ, that was an interesting flash right into the team. As Looper does have the Meganar now as well. Zero is going to fall down. Dade does do a lot of damage, but has to use the E to escape. Condi super low as these Sand Soldiers trying to play defense. Ame does have the spell shield, but Dade is just going to get obliterated by Insect. Immediate double kill there from this Yasuo, and this is going to spell the end of the game. King just smashed this one through, and Insect's Yasuo. We understand now why it's been getting banned away. We saw a pick up a victory early on when he first picked it in that first set. Of course, you know, up against OMG, but now, once again, deserves the ban, does it? 2 4, hope you're ready for 3 4 on three, his Yasuo four, record. Yes, we're top, oh yeah. Fantastic performance from Insect in particular. Yeah. And King, they looked for the same type of strategy, you know, being much more structure focused, being more about the wave pressure, committed it, moved their. Uh, their pressure point off of Korn's Twisted Fate, put him on the victor this time, gave the power to Insec, and he showed up. Yeah, and I actually really like the King lineup when they've got three threats on the board as well. The fact that sort of Korn and Name were so used to just getting focused down and destroyed and then sort of the rest of the support staff not being able to make stuff work. You throw Insect there on a champion that was doing that much ludicrous damage, mm -hmm. things look a whole lot better here for King. Yeah, unfortunately though, Dade. I know, yeah. happy for King. Glad that they won. They were able to finally execute their composition, what they set out to do in the first game, made it connect in the second game. Dade had a great performance.